Hello and welcome to Kerry's Cards. Today I'm going to show you how to make a uh, square card um, that folds flat, but it's a 3D card, but it's a fantastic way to use a penny of your designer series paper, pretty papers, that you've got lots of odd pieces lying around. I've got a few pieces here out of the Hydrangea Haven um, set. I'm going to um, start by, just pop them to one side because we'll come to those in a moment but decide which base layer card. So you will need a normal piece of A4 card to um, for the base of the card. But you look at the cards and pieces of paper that you've got and decide what colour base you're going to use. Now, I think I'm going to actually use um, the... This one is... Heavenly... He no, is it Highland Heather that we're going to use here, the lilac colour. And I'll just put the other one to one side for now because I'm actually going to use that one for the base pieces of card. So we start with our standard piece of A4 card, but we again, we bring in our cutter that we need um, to be able to get all the pieces of card and measurements. And I use my trusted stamping up one here um, that extends out with the arm, but it also has the scorer and the, the, tr the blade as well within that. I've done here, a little post-it note so it tells you the dimensions of the card that we need. We're going to start with a base piece of card that's 10 inches long by 6 inches long. So I'm going to cut it first at 6 inches and then turn that round and then cut this at 10 inches. So you can see here I've marked on the piece of paper on the post-it note here the solid lines and these are two sort of lines that we need to cut and that's going to cause the um, concertine effect of the card. So if we get to two inches here, now on the Stampin' Up trimmer you can see there that um, it can show, you can see the numbers so the, in inches. So I need to lift this up slightly, bring it down to two inches, my cutter, and then just press it down and I'm going to cut between two inches and six inches. Now, obviously, if you don't have one of these trimmers, you can actually just utilise your ruler and cut it that way. And I'm going to move over then to four inches and I'm going to cut again now, but at four inches to eight inches with my cutter. So you can see there I've put those two lines in. I'm then going to turn over my card just so that it's at the same image that you can see there and I'm going to score so I'm going to get the score part of my <clears throat> trimmer now and go down to the two inch line initially and then the second line I'm going to go from four inches and we're going to go down all the way to the four inch line and then move to six inches and then I'm going to go from two inch line down all the way to the bottom of the card and then finally to the eight inches and start at the four inch line down to the end of the base of the card. So we've created these um, three squares in the middle. Okay, and that's all the cutting we're going to do for the minute. And then what happens is you bend your card where you've scored, it's a bit tricky to get it going. Fold these ones here one more direction, so a mountain fold, and the opposite side you want to do is a valley fold. And then what happens is it makes a concertine effect, and that is the base of this card. You can then choose which way you want to actually have your card, so you can have it like that, or that way round. I'll show you an example of both ways. So we'll, we'll carry on with the way we've got here as our front piece of the card. And this is going to be the back of the card. And you can see now we've got some lovely, nice, use your bone folder again to make the edges nice and secure to make sure that the card will stand up. So that is your base of the card. So I'll put that over there out of the way. We then need to create some backdrops for the areas that we've got here and here and then each of these you've actually got one two three four five six seven so I've put all the measurements here for you so we want seven squares because it's all made into squares of one and three quarter inches by one and three quarter inches 
So I'm going to take my Blushing Bride card here and measure one and three quarters. And I want seven of these. One, one and three quarters, two, one and three quarters, three. Now I'm choosing to do all mine all the same colour. But, two, three, four, five. You could, it's too small, so we want one more. Six. You could choose to do different colours. Three quarters. There, so that's my seven little ones, and then I want two at three and three quarters, and they're going to be for the two bigger squares. Let's do that one. To one side, we use for another card. and three quarters so I'll just show you where we're at at the minute then with this so we then have our two ones there and each of these for that for the smaller squares so now we're going to move on to make the patterned or the paper using the designer series paper to make the um, top of the, the playing card so you can choose now get your pieces of card that you have left or the papers that you have and have a look at them and decide which ones you want to use I think I'm going to try and make this into fits into there because it's quite a nice color scheme and then I know that I can stamp an image up there a sentiment for example so I'm going to cut this to be one of my three by three and a half bigger pieces. So you want to think about whether or not you want to be able to put an image or a sentiment on it. And if you do, make sure that you've got a reasonably plain piece of designer series paper so that you can stamp over the image. So that is gonna fit lovely on top of there, okay? For the next one, I'm going to come down a little bit, I think, if that's going to be wide enough. Is that wide enough? Just about three and three quarter, three and a half. And in fact, I'll do the same as well, because then I can decide where I want to put my sentiment. So that's those two finished there. And now I need seven, one and a half by one and a half inches. So what you could do is you could use one strip that you've got and cut it down the lengthways. I'm going to pick up. I'm going to pick up this pink because I want it to marry with the pinks that we've got already. How wide is that one? So I could, in theory, use some of that as well if I wanted a bit of greenery, because that's one and a half inch. So it's just a case of finding those strips of card or DS designer series paper that you've got. So there's two nice pattern pieces and I can use either side of those, remember. I'll do the same again here. So that's four. And I want three others, so I'm gonna do three pink ones. One and a half by one and a half. There's three. And again, we've got either sides there we can utilise. So I'm just going to put these little pieces away. For here. And then it's just the case of putting the card together. I'm going to just use my Tombow glue because it's nice and quick. Marry it up the right squares for each one, each layer. I'm not going to 
going to decide, am I going to do that side? Which side am I going to use? I think I'm going to carry on and do the same side. So it's the same on both. Again, you can choose. And what I'll do at the end, I'll show you some other cards that I've done with leftover pieces of card, just so you can see the different ways or different colour types really that you can utilise. I did three of these. I'll just line them up and what we've gone, because we've gone down by a quarter of an inch for each one, it's really quick and easy and they're nice little squares. or marry the two or bring it all together because you've taken the images off the bottom. That's the beauty of the Stampin' Up! Um, designer series papers because all the colours, whichever side you utilise, it's going to match and go as long as you've picked the base colours out. Whoop! Uh-oh. Let's see. Okay. All right, so that's my four there and three. Now, when I do these cards and put them together, I tend to do a four and a three because I know I've got the three in the middle there. So I can do, so it's, I like symmetry. So I, I make them all symmetrical and do it that way. You could choose to put them in three the same that way if you wanted. Yeah, it's entirely up to you, but I quite like the break of doing it that way. So I'm gonna layer mine <clears throat> that way. Again, I'm using Tombow here. You could, if you wanted to, use um, sticky pads, 3D dimensionals, just to lift it off the card. But because you can see where we've scored again, these leave us nice little two inch squares. You could add ribbons in if you wanted to around one of them. I've said that I might actually do that because I haven't stuck this one down yet so I might just put a little bit of ribbon down or a bit of string I think I'm actually going to use garden twine if it matches I've got some white I'm sure everybody has a, a selection or a, a, a something where you keep all your spare bits that you think I might use or I'm not quite sure if I will use so I'm just going to use some of the white twine that I've got here. Get the little scissors. So I often I have an idea when I start making a card, but I often tweak it or change it slightly. Too loose, way too loose. Just tie that in a knot, actually, and then um, glue this one down. That's nice and tight. I'll just try and put it into a smaller bow. Ooh, my fingers and thumbs. There we go. Mix them up, make them the same size. Okay, so there we have a lovely little 3D card that was very quick and easy and used up all your scraps. I'm going to pop a little sentiment on. Here, again, I'm going to utilise the um, stamp set that goes with the um, range. So if you wanted to, you could add other elements on it. So for example, I tend to stamp some images and I keep them in the folder with them so that I always have them ready if I wanted to. Um, so for example, I've got a couple of logos there or things that I could pop on. I might decide to add 
3D element of a... Oh, look, I can do that. Just so when I'm making a card and I'm not quite sure where I'm going with it, just add another element on. Oh, I quite like that. So I'll just use some glue to pop this on down. Again, if you have a few other bits and pieces, it doesn't really matter. I mean, this is quite fortunate that I had this ready and handy. Add that one down there. I'm going to put some 3D dimensionals on this one. This is my, I use the mini ones, but then I've got the end sheets and I cut them so I'm not wasting. To lift it up off the card. And then I was going to put that one on, but I'm actually going to turn it into a birthday card. So I'm going to use the happy birthday from the sweet ice cream set because I know that that will fit beautifully there when the card's folded. <clears throat> so if I get my stamping block and let's pick out the gorgeous grape colour. add another little bit if you wanted to but I'm going to leave it there so that is a great way of using up some scrap pieces of colored card paper whatever you have to hand you can add a few blings on it I see my little bling tray I have here with lots of different options my picky tool it off put a couple over there put them in odd numbers so it draws the eye to them and there we have very quick birthday card now you've got the space on the back to write if you wanted to you can pop a little bit of white um whisper white card there some of the ones that I've done, I'll just bring them in now to show different colourways. So that's the lilacs and pinks. We have a greens and yellows. That's using the dandelion garden. Now, don't this one, remember I said you could choose whichever side you, where you wanted your card to be. So this one was put on the opposite side. Okay. And then we have the seaside one. So Sahara sand and some pinks. And then this one here is uh, more of a male version using the Knight of Navy and the Round the World card. So there's lots of different options there and colorways. Give you some ideas um, and happy playing. I'd love to see any comments that you might have, um, any suggestions for anything else that you might like to see me record for you. Um, much appreciated. If you like what you've seen today, um, please press the like button. Hop over to my blog on Kerry's Cards UK for more information and more ideas. Many thanks for watching. Bye.